Welcome to Friday Night Mother's Church. It is a good day to be in the house of the Lord. It's October, the best month of the year, my birthday month. Um, I know you're not going to figure out to get me, but I've got an Amazon wish list. I can send you the link if you need it. Um, so, in October, one of the other things, it's spooky season, right? But it's also Halloween at the end of the month. And so, for all Halloween, all Hallows celebrations here, we're going to do our trunk in treat. There will be trunks. There will be treats. It's going to be October 24th. If you have a trunk and you would like to decorate it, um, you know, nothing too scary. I, I frighten easily. Um, but if you want to decorate it for trunk or treat, trunk in treat, that, then um, sign up, let us know, and it would be great to have you there distributing treats. Um, if you're a kid and you want to wear a costume, if you're a up and you want to wear a costume, come on. It's going to be a lot of fun. The donut bag truck is going to be there, and um, I can personally tell you, the donut guy does not mess around. It's phenomenal. So come to the donut guy at least. The second announcement is we've got the flu shot clinic going on over in the youth building right now. I've already got my shot. Scott got his. Um, we're doing that to protect ourselves, to protect you. Um, we need all the immunity we can get, right? Um, so third thing, with this being working Sunday and also talking about the children today, I am disarmed. There's no robe. Scott's not wearing a robe. And the kids are going to come up for the sermon. We're doing a sermon slash children's moment. It's going to be awesome. Jesus cares about kids. And so Trinity cares about kids. Because we're here to worship God. So will you pray with me? Almighty God, we give you thanks that you've brought us here. Lord, you have something to say to us today. Lord, we have things... We need to tell you. Or we come to feast. To feast with Christians around the world. On your body and blood. To be made one in you. One with each other. One with your family. God, we ask that you bless this time. And use it for your glory and our good. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Whether you're worshiping with us in person or online, 
We are so happy to have you with us this morning. Please stand as you're able for our responsive greeting, and your part is in bold. Jesus prayed that we might be one, one in spirit, one in mission, in union and communion with each other and with you. Please remain standing for our congregational hymn, To God Be the Glory, on page 98 of your hymnal. Today's Old Testament reading is Psalm 26. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity, and I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Prove me, O Lord, and try me. Test my heart and mind. For your steadfast love is before my eyes, and I walk in faithfulness to you. I do not sit with the worthless, nor do I consort with hypocrites. I hate the company of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence and go around your altar, O Lord, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and telling all your wondrous deeds. O Lord, 
I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. Do not sweep me away with sinners, nor my life with the bloodthirsty, those in whose hands are evil devices, and whose right hands are full of bribes. But as for me, I walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be gracious to me. My foot stands on level ground. In the con- that great congregation, I will bless the Lord. May God bless the reading, hearing, and living of his word. You can choose to be here at Sunday United Methodist Church in Whitewood, and this is the place to be today. It's a little bit different. Coach and I talked about how freeing it was not to have a light on. It's a little chilly in here. But that's the okay. case. Well, I swear it won't, it'll, it'll hopefully make me feel even cooler than I am. There's a reason, and we'll get to that. But I hope to get through some other things in our scripture that you adults will know. So, Clark and I preach on what's called the Revised Common Lectionary. So it's a three-year cycle of scriptures that really tell the story of God's work in the world, right? 
And so today, when they were putting these scriptures together, obviously the, the folks who did that many, many years ago said, oh, we're going to mess with some pastors. <laughs> because when I read the scripture, you'll understand which topic I'm going to preach on and which one I'm going to stay clear of. I'm probably going to step there briefly and then I'm going to move on. But we, we, you, you, you'll get to that and you'll understand. I'm going to read the scripture first, and then we've got some things that I want the kids to come, and we'll kind of have a fun time together. So um, let's read Mark 10, verses 2 through 16 first. Let's hear these words. Some Pharisees came, and to test him, being Jesus, they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses, uh, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. And the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. He said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to Jesus in order that he might touch them, and the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and bless them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So which topic am I preaching on today? The little children. Man, I, y'all, man, y'all help me out there. I was a little confused which way I was going to go. But I do want to touch just briefly at, at, at the top piece. Because I'm going to do this before the kids come up. Because I don't want to have to talk about that in front of the kids. Right? That's just not something that we want to talk about. However, I want us to understand the whole idea of what Jesus is saying. During that time, women were property. So when you were married, you were married as a property, not out of love. So that was the time. And so when the Pharisees were talking and questioning Jesus, they knew what the law was. They knew Jesus knew what the law was. But what Jesus says, it's just a little bit different. And I think that I want to bring to our attention is that when Jesus says this, then in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. He said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. It was okay for the man to, to divorce, but the woman was not to do that. But Jesus says, if the woman does that, it's equal. He puts women on the same footing as men. That would have been right you still be an adulterer, but that's okay. You're on the same footing, though, right? Because you'd be less than. And that, right? So Jesus is hitting them with, whoa, I can't believe that you're saying this, right? So, but, but in the end, what I want us to hear is that people get hurt when that happens. I'm not going to debate the reasons behind all that. But in the end, when someone, when, when families have divorced, there is hurt. Right. That's what happens. Now, let's have the children come forward and let's have some fun and, and talk about something else. And as they come forward, so do you know anybody? Do you know anybody who likes to be a child or is childlike? Huh? Do you know anybody? You do? Really? Oh, oh. Oh, that's a good oh, back there. What's he doing back there? Oh, you got something to drink. Martha has something to drink. I can bring me some. All right. Oh, yeah. Y'all just sit right here. I'm going to sit on the step. Okay? If y'all sit down close here. So who, who in here is childlike? Who acts like a child sometimes? Yeah, man. Woo! All right. All right. You see who's not raising their hands. Y'all aren't raising your hands. Hey, how are y'all? We got something different today, don't we? Y'all are never, I'm never down here with y'all, are we? So see, I didn't wear my robe today because I couldn't get down here with you. Could I? So I had to be free so I can talk to y'all. He does not. 
See, they are already they are already part of the sermon. I'll fill you in on what she said there in a little while, okay? I'll say it out loud in a minute to help prove the point. So, 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 Jesus. So the story today is Jesus had the children come to him, right? And it would be easy. If I say, well, why don't we have the, have y'all come sit with me and we'll do the sermon together, which is what this is going to be, okay? And y'all are going to participate in this. We're going to show you some things. We'll be show and tell. You can ask questions. You know, and the adults can listen in, but really this is for y'all, okay? But then sometimes the adults need to hear. Charlie, you're going to listen too, right? You're going to listen too. So, um, so the whole idea is when Jesus let the children come to them. Now, I'm also going to talk to the adults. So I'll kind of talk looking at you, but I'll also let them hear what I'm saying, right? Sometimes it's okay to be like a child, right? Us adults do that. But sometimes we, we get in trouble. We get in trouble. You're going to help me? You're going to help me? We get in trouble because we... We want. We don't want. We don't want to share. Like if Charlie wants to have my iPad right now, I'm not going to share with him. I, he's looking. But see, you, see, you have Minecraft on it. You be playing games, right? I can't play games. You play games. What kind of games do you like? Great, because we get to learn. We can play games and we can learn. See, they're already they're already doing the sermon for me. Right? I'm not gonna have to I'm not gonna have to prove to y'all what Jesus meant by this, right? Because he's already happening, right? Some of y'all are cringing. Oh my gosh, how's Pastor Scott gonna answer? You know what? That's okay because the kids can come forward. The kids can speak because they're gonna say something in a little bit that's gonna just blow us all away. And I may not know the answer, and that's okay, right? But let me tell let me tell the adults the story, right? So a lot of times we have our own things and we want to hold it. We want to. We, we don't want to share, and we have little pity parties, and we we can become like children. But that's not what Jesus is saying. He's not calling us to be childish, but Jesus is calling us to to be more childlike and to welcome the kingdom. Thought we would welcome a child. So that's why y'all are sitting here, right? Because I wanted y'all to be a part of this, right? Have you ever? Have y'all ever? Been part of the sermon before? Y'all ever preached? Y'all ever preached the sermon before? Okay. You you want to try? You, you're going to get to do that because I'm going to ask you some questions in a minute. So you're excited, aren't you? I, we got it going on up here. She's she's going to be the next pastor in your line. There, be careful. If not that, she's going to be a good salesperson. So, um, <laughs> so this story about Jesus appears in Matthew. Mark and Luke. Do, do y'all know about those books of the Bible? You, you've heard about, about them? Matthew, Mark, and Luke. They're about books in the Bible. And this story is important because Jesus wanted us to hear this. It's in three different places. That means it should be important to us, right? And, in, and as we listen, we're going to understand how important it is. Now, I'm going I'm to speak to the adults. Okay, y'all just kind of mind your business for a second. Well, I'm going to tell the adults that Jesus was indignant in this scripture, right? Seven times in the New Testament, indignant in Greek, the word is used in the New Testament. This is one of those times. The other times are, are when the, the disciples were upset and indignant that James and John were trying to get their seat, right? To sit at the right hand of, of Christ. Right? Um, it's a, use, a word used to describe the Pharisees when Jesus kept healing on the Sabbath. They were indignant that he was doing this. Used to describe the chief priests and teachers of the law when Jesus cleansed the temple. And it's used to describe the disciples when a lady used a whole bottle of expensive perfume on Jesus' feet. She put it all on his feet. But there's only one time it's used to Jesus, and this is it. Jesus wasn't happy because the disciples said, Don't let the children come. You got to rest. You got other things to do. And Jesus said, No, come on. Have a, have a seat, right? Y'all like sitting up here, don't you? Yeah, that's fine, isn't it? It's like being the boss. Yeah, now we're talking. Now we got a great sermon going on here, right? It's about being the boss. Okay, well, I'm a, I, I, so, you know, when, you, when you're the boss, sometimes you got to make some hard decisions. and it, It's hard sometimes. But we're going to talk about what being the boss is, right? Because there's one that's greater boss than any of us. Who's that? God. Thank you for going ahead and answering that question. I was... Who's that? 
And Jesus, I'm Jesus, I'm sorry, yeah, I forgot about Jesus. And we're going to show you a little bit, you know, so what's on the table? What do we do today? What kind of communion, right? All right, so in a little bit, we're going to show you what that is, right? Because y'all don't get a good chance to see it. It sits up there. We're going to bring it to you and let you look at it, okay? That's which will be pretty awesome. And we're going to teach you a little bit about what, what communion means, right? And that way, when you have communion with your family, you'll have a better understanding. You'll get to see Jesus in a different way. So, Jesus isn't happy, right? But there's three things I want us to remember. And this is for us, but really, I want the parents to hear this. And you can listen to it too. To, to, to be with Christ, we have to have faith like a little child, right? So that's you adults. We have to have faith like children. We have to, to believe, right? So when, I'm gonna, when I show you all the bread and the juice, and I'm going to ask you, what it is, right? And, I, and, it, and it's going to be what you say it is. And then I'm going to say, but if it's something more, you have to have faith to believe that. Right. Okay. I like your crown, by the way. And your dog. What's your dog's name? It doesn't have a name. It doesn't have to have a name. Rex. It could be Rex. It could be whatever. It could be. It could be any. That's awesome, isn't it? Bob Ross, you're awesome, man. I'm telling you. You gotta have faith like a little child. You gotta be able to believe. You gotta be able to have faith. You gotta believe what it is that, that can happen. Right? We're talking about Jesus here, right? Sometimes in life we have to have faith, and sometimes things happen, and sometimes it doesn't go our way, right? Sometimes we get disappointed. But not with Jesus. And not with God, okay? That's what we're trying to get to. Okay, the second thing I want us to remember. Adults is that we need to become dependent like little children. These children, can't, you you can't, you don't have a, do you have a job? No. Okay. Do y'all drive? Do you have, do you have a driver's license? Can I see that? Do you have a driver's license? So you have your you have your grocery list. You're gonna go to the store. IRAs. Okay. What what do y'all have? You have stuffies, stuffed animals. What else do you have? Video games? What do you have? Oh, yeah, I'm learning a lot about them. Yeah, Fleetwood, Fleetwood's back there. I'm learning some good stuff about them. You got money? Yeah, I have 200 bucks. Hey, if you're giving a... The... Well, no, no, you need to put in. You're not, you, yeah, you need to put in. Okay. Okay. It's the best sermon you'll ever have, I'm telling you right now. So, yes, ma'am. Ooh. And ice cream. Man, with some scratch off back there, yeah. <laughs> Man, so let's let's talk about that for a minute. So we we are dependent. Y'all are the, y'all. Are, that means you need your parents to help you, right? You just can't go to the store by yourself. So have to, someone has to take you, right? And you just don't you don't have a job. So, but but to, to get some money, sometimes you have to do chores. You do things. Maybe you get something for your birthday. Man, you got great parents if they're just giving it to you, right? Man, that's awesome, right? Sometimes you do that. Anything. I don't get paid to take out a tax either. Man, I'm, I'm, can I, what's your family? I'm going to come hang out with you, okay? This is being seeker sensitive. Nobody else is visiting, please. I'm not going to call you out. This is how this is working that way. I'm sorry. Just, uh, we're just trying to we're just trying to have a sermon here, right? So we have to be dependent. Adults have to be dependent on God. Right? That's what we're talking about here. Jesus wants us to be dependent. We can't do these things by ourselves. We need God. So we have jobs and we have all kinds of things, 
But we really need, we need God to guide us and help us and to, to, to teach us what? Patience and to listen. And uh, for me to be patient and sit in here with all these kids knowing that they're going to ask me some crazy things. You got more good stories about your parents? <laughs> What's that? What's 18 times 18? 320. So what we need to understand is what? We need to have faith like children and we need to be dependent. So why, why would those be important? You see what innocent these kids are? They're just there. Tell me, tell me what children are like, right? Children are innocent, right? They have their own, um, oh, let me see where, I, yo, maybe I lose where I am almost trying to figure this out. So, you know, the whole idea is that, um, no, wait, what no, no, got me up the I don't even know what's not supposed to be like this. You're supposed to be innocent. And that's what I'm saying. Now, you're going to listen, right? You're going to listen. What do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to be when you grow up? Either a Navy SEAL or a Comfort Seller. There we go. There we go. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, well... Yeah, because you know, you've been the whole secret. You've been, you know, 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 you've been, Okay, so, so, so uh, we have to be, we have to be as a open, simple, right? So, see, we see the world that way, right? We need to be more like that. That's what, that's what Christ is talking about. And then, the first thing we need to receive the kingdom as a gift. We need to receive the 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 gift, right? That's how we need to be about receiving the gift God gives us, right? Just as excited as that, right? But see what kind of gift they want them out. What kind of gift do you like, Tom? The gift of the power. Man, that is awesome. Oh, that's good. Okay. But, so we need to be able to receive God's gifts. We need to be able to receive. You know, I love this iPad and my hands. I can't receive anything, can I? Because I've got my hands full. But when I open up like this, Hold the, don't hold your hands out. See, you can receive a gift, right? So, so when communion comes, right, you're going to receive the, the little container that has the bread and juice. It's a little wafer and juice in it, right? And that's the body and blood of Christ. That's pretty powerful, isn't it? Isn't that a great gift? And it's important. It, it's the gift of food. What else, what else happens when we get that? And, have communion. Hmm? Well, we have communion, you eat so you don't starve. You eat so you don't starve. That is theoretically sound. Because it's more than just food. You eat it so you don't starve and you don't end up dying from starvation. Okay, very good. Right. Yes, ma'am. So the bread is the body of Christ, and the juice is His blood, isn't it? The question: Will you, will you bring, bring those up? You got a moment? You got your child there for a minute, and um, come over here. We're going to tell you what this is. Right? We, we, you don't get a chance to see this. It, it's going to bring it to you. So this is going to be the same, right? And the, it's wrapped right up in a cloth, right? Why, why would we wrap it up in a cloth? So this is a cloth, okay? So it's a big body. What's that? Good news? What's that? So what happens like when you bring a little baby home from the hospital and you wrap them up in a little blanket? Something important? 
cold. This, this is they, we're, they're protecting it, right? From the sun. So we like it, it protects it, right? It's like wrapping it up, and it's important. It's special, right? So this is special. It's food. You going to eat some in a little bit? You are. You still have it. Yeah, it was good. And so in a little while, you're going to get the little container. I'm sorry you're going to get the container right now. We're going to get it with you. But we're going to show you what's in the cup up there. Now, what, what was that that Pastor Carson showed you? What, what, what's it called? A lot of bread. So that's bread. So this is a great question. Oh my God. So great question. So why do we buy one loaf of bread when it's only two of us are going to eat from it? Right? Because it represents the one body which we are all of. Right? It's one body. Now I'm going to let you look in this. And don't don't touch. Just look in and tell me what you see when you look in there. Into that. What do you see in there? Man, so so that was so what was that that you looked at? Juice. So it's 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 grape juice. Is that what it is? So so how does it become Jesus's blood? Okay. The color of it. Okay. What makes it Jesus' blood? It represents it. Okay. Okay. Do, do, do you know how it becomes that? Let me tell you about the me, and then you can tell me about your dad in a minute. Okay. So, so he's called, I'm going to tell you something about this guy. Mr. Phil Valentine is in this room, and he is going to love what I'm going to tell y'all. I'm going to teach you something that the adults in here don't know, most of them. How about that? That's it. Mr. Phil Valentine is going to love me, and what I'm about to say. So, so here's, here's how it becomes Jesus' blood. So I'm going to teach you a word. Man, you learned some Greek? Is that what you learned? So it's called epiclesis. So say, so, 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 so epi, cle, sis, epiclesis. Okay, so here's what that means. There's going to come a time during communion, and you'll watch me when I'm standing behind there. Right? I'm going to stand behind there, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to say this. Pray the Holy Spirit on us that are here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Oh, no, no, this is the Spirit of life. This is God's Spirit. God's Spirit is coming and He's going to fill us and He's going to make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ. So in those moments when those words happen, guess what? It is a mystery. It's the body and blood of Christ. It becomes Jesus. Did y'all know that? Yeah. Oh, see, see, they knew that, and you didn't even know that. Just that. that see, y'all know what you're talking about. Yes. It, it can represent how you're going to believe in yourself. So let me let me wrap this up for the adults. We need to have faith like children. We need to be dependent on God, and we need to receive the great gifts from the kingdom. We need to receive the gifts from God. 
And it doesn't have to be just the mean with grace and mercy. We all could use some some of that back. We need we need these gifts. And we need the children. No, sweet history. You don't need hair, but I'm just kidding. Okay. Okay. Here's what, here's what we can do. You know, we need, to, we need to think about giving some of that back to God, right? Because we need God's help. So sometimes when we receive some money, we can give some back. That's what we're going to do in a little bit, okay? So maybe you would consider that. Now, don't look at me kind of crazy like that, because that's, that, that helps. But that's giving back to God. Because you're only here because God has been gracious, right? And He's been really nice. And He continues to be nice. We'll talk about that in a little bit, okay? I'll get to that story in a little bit. I don't want to. I don't want to know too much about your parents, right? So, so, so if I ask you, and we're going to end with this, if I ask you, what song do you know that helps us know? How important Jesus is. <laughs> okay, so, 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 I'm going to get Jay Taylor to stop playing Jesus Loves Me, okay? We, we, we're going to sing this together, okay? We, we, we're going to get Jay stop playing and then we'll sing it, okay? Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Truth, right there. Hold that in your heart, and I'm going to tell the adults that we need to go find time to sit on Jesus' lap and be like a child. Right? We need to accept like a child. So we need to be dependent on God, and we need to receive His gifts and be willing to receive those gifts, regardless of whatever it is that comes our way. Okay? All right. We're just about to Any more questions? We can talk about your dog uh, Any other questions you have? Yes. I have many questions. Yeah. Are there any powers left? Are there any powers left? Like communion? Uh-huh. Yeah, you can make an hour. Man, what are you going to do when you grow up? In here? Astronaut? Astronaut? Great. You're on your way. What do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a builder. A builder, girl. So you should be a builder. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. We don't always know what we're going to be, and sometimes we learn. I mean, I've been many different things. Yeah, we learn from our mistakes. You learn from your mistakes. Why are you telling the parents that? Why are you telling the parents that? Right? So, so see, they, they know the sermon. They know exactly what to say because they come at it with a childlike faith. Okay, two more questions, and I'm going to the same words for 500. Okay, go for it. <laughs> you, oh, hey, 
You know, Pastor Carson's birthday is coming up, and mine just passed. So, I'm calling to the Kim. So, Ms. Kim, so, um, we're going to have a bucket at the door, and you put money in for us for our birthday. Is that okay? Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. Probably not. Probably not. But we can always give back to God because I give mine away to God. Okay? One more question. Oh, very good. You guys have got a very perfect microphone on the road. So everybody, so everybody in the room can hear me. Right? So I can talk loud enough, but see, I don't have to talk real loud, and everybody in the room can hear what I'm saying. So it it makes my voice and sends it out those speakers above me. So if I go like this, they can hear me. Everybody can hear me. Yeah, they have the microphone. So I think one of those in another church, we have the microphone, kind of the Britney Spears microphone, right on the side there. You know what I'm talking about? They have a or something. Those are kind of cool. Maybe one day we'll get one of those. Cross their mind. We can wait. We have song and dance. And then they can come again. Can we do this again? Get the sermon from time? Yes, I can do this again. Yes, I can tell you about my dad's friends. I can tell you about all about your parents. And dad. Um, I'll probably will have a counseling session with them, and that'll be okay. You're welcome, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray. Now, let me ask y'all, I'm going to ask you a big question. Do any of you feel like you can pray? You want to you want to pray? Okay, we're gonna turn the microphone on. You ready? Okay, and, so, and, and, and this and this will be serious. Like you pray for us, and you pray. Um, you just pray. I'm not gonna tell you what to do. You pray. You can do like to repeat after me. Can you do the children's moment sometimes? You want to do the Lord's prayer? Do you know the Lord's prayer? And here's what, here's what I want you to do. Why don't you lead us and lead the congregation in the Lord's Prayer? Uh, you can hold it. You can hold it. Or do you need to hold it? You need to hold your hand. You can just hold it like this. And, and so, can you go line by line? Can you do that? You know? Our Father, who art in heaven. 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 So, so, man, you, yeah, that's awesome, right? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you, we'll go back to your seat to be with your parents, and then in a little bit, there's going to be some people who are going to bring along the little, uh, the blood, body and the blood, the bread and the juice for communion, and you can have that with your parents, right? So you already know, okay, what was the word we learned? At the crisis? Remember that? So remember, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. When I say that part, watch what happens. So if you see anything, okay? You want to watch? Okay. All right. You got the answer. Look at the best thing you do. Look at me. Look at what Jesus does, okay? All right. Okay. This is great to keep the going on the service, okay? We're going to keep going. We've still got work to do. All right. So the thing we can teach us a lot, right? They, they taught us, you, take, you will take something away from this. 
right? As you listen to them talk, and as you try to, to see, you know, none of that was disruptive. None of that was, was inappropriate. It was, I mean, it's, it, the, the, the kids need to be able to speak, and that's how we are to be with God. We need to just ask, and don't worry what we might think. You know, if we think we're not worthy, we'll never go to God. And God says, you are worthy. Those kids weren't worried about embarrassing anybody. <laughs> Man, that, that, that was that totally be one of my top few sermons I've ever done. I've never done it with kids and tried to go off the cuff with them. So that's good. That's good. Right, so let's thank God for the way He has blessed us by the presentation of our tithes. Our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another. All who come like children with open hands, pure hearts. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. And we have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. 
Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Here's the good news. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Service will continue with the great thanksgiving, page 13 in your hymnal. This liturgy is a little bit different, but all of your responses will be the same. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up your hearts. Lift up your hearts. Lift up it is right and give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You have blessed the nation, and the nation, and people to live on all the faces of the earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hallelujah to you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. In the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. The Lord has from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. We commission us to be witnesses to the ends of the earth and to make disciples of all nations. And today his family and all the world is joining at his holy table. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. Pour it out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. My right, children, don't watch. Everybody know them. Don't, don't follow along. Remember what I told y'all. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us, Father, here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by His blood. Renounce the union with your church throughout the world, and strengthen the in every nation and among other people to witness faithfully in your name. May your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at His heavenly banquet. Through the Son Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. We've had a great rendition of the Lord's Prayer already, and we're going to leave it right there. Okay? So we thank our children for what they've done to lead us in worship today. All are welcome at the table. This is a table that you're, you are worthy. It will come to you. Our service will come to you. Um, but know that this is special. Body and blood of Christ. We are one body. Someone asked about just one loaf. Why do we have one? If only two of us are going to partake. But this one represents us all and the body of Christ. And this is only one cup. But we are one body. And we partake. In the blood of Christ.
Almighty God, we are thankful that we are invited to the table. And as we celebrate communion, millions of people around the world on this day are celebrating, receiving the body and blood of Christ. Coming and feeling unworthy, receiving and leaving worthy. We thank you for the gift of mercy and grace. Those gifts we need to be willing and ready to receive. Teach us to be dependent on you and to have that Christ-like faith. Let we can welcome in the kingdom as we would welcome the children around us. Bless us as we go. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Closing hymn is hymn 620, one blessed, one body, let us stand and sing. So, we need to be with faith like a child, to be open to experience how God will show Himself to us and reveal Himself to us in ways that we don't always expect. Right? Like an All right? will come and, and lead us. Find grace and peace. Open your hands to receive God's love this week. Go in peace to love and serve our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this day and always. Amen. Thank you.